Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Left Church. Good morning. Welcome. Let's get right to it. <clears throat> Father, I thank you for today. I pray that you would open up the truth to our hearts, minds, spirits. That you would speak right through these lips. You're good, you're loving, you're eternal, you're blessed, and you love us. Help us to see, help us to believe, help us to trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, right before I was getting off work yesterday, I was like, I don't know what to preach about. Today is actually Saturday. I preach this Saturdays now just so I can upload it on Sunday. Y'all can have that. And this person I work on alongside, meaning they work in the same uh, building I do. They asked me a question. They've been asking me a lot of questions. And uh, it seems like they're getting two different pictures here. One of the pictures is coming from their parents. And another picture is coming from whatever their own reasoning. And, and I'm telling them an, a different story. And it's about God. You and I believe that there's only one God, right? For those of you who believe. Um, so did the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin at the time that Jesus was born. And many people believe different things about Jesus. I believe one thing and you believe another. Now, I'm going to take this to the Old Testament. I want you to imagine that the Old Testament is like God's diary, right? He wrote it, inspired by uh, the Holy Spirit through many different prophets. But it's God's diary. It's like a personal diary that God wrote. Now, with that being said, <laughs> He decides to come to earth in a manger. Now, there are many people who spoke about his coming before he even came. And, and they recorded it down about a savior. The Pharisees were the people who were very religious. They memorized the old Testament. I mean, they knew or they were supposed to know everything about this. And they did. Their interpretation of God's diary was one thing. But when he finally showed up in the flesh, he finally showed up in person. They looked at the Old Testament and they thought to themselves, this is not you. This is not, you. This is not God. And God is looking them directly in the face and saying, I am God. This diary is written about me. And the Pharisees were like, this is, this, no. Because the God that they're picturing is supposed to show up in burning flames through the clouds. And he was supposed to wipe out everybody who wasn't a Jew or who didn't believe in him. Now, the same thing happens today. We're picturing this God in our mind. We're thinking, oh, he's supposed to look like this. He's supposed to act like this. 
right? And usually what that looks like is the way we walk around in our world, which means the way we carry our own selves. Jesus said, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. What he's basically saying is how you, how you treat people and how you view the world is what you worship. That is your God. You're not God, but that is what you worship. But Jesus says, I am the perfect image of God. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. So we have a Bible. And then there are many interpretations of other religions. They have their Bible, per se, which is their own religion. And he, but I'm going to focus on just the Bible right now and just say, those of us who believe in the one true God, there's one baptism, there's one Jesus, there's one God, there's one faith, and there's one Holy Spirit. So we should be the imitation of that. We should, we should start to reflect who that God is. Because God says, I'm only one person. But everyone is reading the Bible or everyone has their own persona of what God is supposed to be like. The Catholics have theirs. The Mormons have theirs. The Jehovah's Witness have theirs. The Presbyterians have theirs. You know, the Buddha and all these other different religions, they have their own persona of what God's like. But when Jesus showed up, he says... I know what everybody else says about me, about God. But I tell you, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I know what your parents say. I know what society says. I know what these churches say. I know what all these people say about me. But I tell you the truth, I am he. This is what Jesus said to the entire world. And this is what he says every day. There's only one God. And there's only one interpretation of the word of God. How do you read the Bible? I tell you, you cannot read it unless you are anointed with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit? I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit is. It's a gift. It's not something that you can earn or obtain on your own. God gives the Holy Spirit to the humble. He doesn't give it to the prideful. There was something that someone said to me yesterday, and they said, I feel good when I do good things. But I'll tell you what Jesus says. Jesus says, let not thy right hand know what thy left hand is doing. A good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A good person can't do bad things and a bad person can't do good things. Well, you're thinking to yourself, I'm just gonna do more good things. Well, guess what? Someone said to me, it makes me feel good when I do good things. I'll tell you what, Jesus said, let not thy right hand know what thy left hand is doing. It means a good person doesn't even know that the good that they're doing. And a bad person doesn't even know the bad that they're doing. I know that sounds weird. But the meaning is this. If you know the good that you're doing, it means you want credit for that. But I'll tell you, you can't add or take away from the cross. You can't add onto Jesus' works. And those little good feelings that you feel, those are temporary good feelings. This world leans on its feelings. There are a lot of things that feel good that are bad. We call that sin. And that's why Jesus says, don't lean on your feelings, lean on the Holy Ghost. Because my feelings want me to lust. My feelings want me to steal. My feelings want me to do all the things that God does not like me to do, such as worship idols.
There's only one God and there's only one way to read the Bible, but we can't read it ourselves. A lot of us think that just because we go to church or just because we pray every once in a while or just because we even read the Bible that we're saved. And I want to tell you this is what the Holy Spirit told me. A lot of you guys aren't saved. Because Jesus says in the last day, many will say to me, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we feed the poor and do all these wonderful things in your name? And Jesus would look at him in the face and say, I never knew you. Get away from me, you evildoer. Wow, how do I get saved then if I'm not saved? Well, I'm going to get to that. That's the only way that that parable makes sense. And then the people who got saved were like, I didn't even know I was doing these things for you, Lord. He said, at the least of these you've done, you've done to me. When did we help you when you were, you know, in need? When you were hurt or when you were in prison? When did we help you, Lord? They weren't even aware of their good works. For those of you who go around boasting in your works, you go, look what I done to the community. Look what I did here. I tell you, that only glorifies you. That doesn't glorify God. Or you do it and then you don't tell anyone but one person. That's only for you. God says, that's all the reward you ever get. There's one God, there's one Jesus, there's one Savior, one baptism, one spirit, one truth. The Pharisees were looking God right in the face. The creator of even their own body, the one who holds their bodies together by his word, looking at God. They had interpreted his word their own way. And it's usually, this is why, it's usually to cover up their sin. Some of you guys, that you read the Bible, or you don't, or you have this interpretation of what the Bible is supposed to be, but you never look at the Bible yourself. And some of you look at the Bible and you go, oh, well, I'll just not read that part. I'll just not look at that part. I'll just, this is the part I really like. This is my favorite book. This is my favorite verse. Because as long as I have that verse in my life, I don't have to look at the rest of the verses that convict me of my sin. So I'm going (laughs) to, I'm going to disillusion this next thing. This next thing is grace. Grace is given but it's not interpreted the way you think it is. It's not just, oh, we're all sinners. We could just do whatever we want. That's not the, that's not the purpose of grace. It's not why God gives it, first off. We're all sinners. We're just gonna just do whatever we want now and just ask for forgiveness. No, that's not how it works. Yes, you can ask God for forgiveness, but God may not always extend his hand to help you if you continue to live in sin. Because what you're going to do is just say, oh, there's just grace. I'm just going to keep watching porn. Oh, there's just grace. I'm going to keep on stealing. Oh, there's just grace. I'm just going to keep on doing this. And your, your life never changes because you just go, you know that God's going to forgive you, right? That's like speeding down the highway and knowing that if you get pulled over, you're just going to say, I'm sorry to the cop and just continue to do it. You're not going to learn your lesson. Some of you guys think that you're saved and you're actually not saved. This is what it means to be saved. If you're drowning and someone decides to help you, whether they throw your life vest out or pull you up, You're no longer in the water. You're no longer drowning. Now that representation of water means it's sin. Let's just say it's sin. 
whatever you're drowning in. You're drowning in porn. You're drowning in alcohol. You're drowning in whatever the sins of the Bible that say that these are sins. Gossiping, hating each other, unforgiveness, sex, adultery, sleeping with someone else that's not your spouse. You're drowning in those sins. And they constantly want you to do more of it. And Jesus, you ask, cry out to God, Jesus, help me. God takes you out of the water. He takes you out of that sin. You're no longer drowning, right? You're saved. That's what it means to be saved. But if you jump back in the water, if you jump back into that sin, you're not saved again. There's no more purification of sin once you go back to it. The only person who can atone for sin is the blood of Jesus. And it's like re-crucifying Jesus over again. I know that there's, you're going to have struggles. God knows that for the rest of your life. But he wants to get you to a point where you no longer desire those things anymore. You will desire him no and if anything, his desires are you'll, you'll hate sin. You won't hate people. You'll hate sin. You'll draw near to him to the point where you'll go like, wow, I no longer crave that anymore. Even when it comes around again. So let me give you a more clear picture here. Let's say you get saved. And then you, you're walking your faith out with Christ for about a year year a year and you struggle with let's just say pornography and then he helps you and then you go back to it and then he helps you then you go back to it and he will keep helping you if he sees that you're trying to get better just like an alcoholic they'll get better if they want to get better yes they may fall and stumble sometimes and and slip up on a on a beer or two same thing with smoking cigarettes or marijuana whatever your sin is but in the course of that year, it may take some of you longer than a year, like 10, 10 years. There should be some progression to where you no longer desire that and to the point where you, you're done. You're completely done with it. That's where God wants you. That's where Christ wants you. He's, he's here to restore what was lost. To bring you back to your youth, be, to be like a child again. Children don't like alcohol. They don't even know what it is. Hopefully they don't, <laughs> or cigarettes or sex and all that stuff that we fall into when we get older. So that's where God wants us. He wants us to return to him. He wants us to desire him, to desire his love more than we desire those things. Those are temporary feelings. Oh, I got, oh, I smoked a cigarette. It makes me feel good. Oh, I got high. It makes me feel good. And then you go back down and feel like crap again. Usually because you're trying to cover up something that happened in your past and instead of open it up and be vulnerable to open it up and seek for help, to let it surface so we can pull that out by the roots and plant some beautiful flowers in that area of your heart. You just keep covering it up with sin, with more sin, and it gets worse. A lot of you guys don't even know how to ask for help, especially y'all men. It's pride. God says, I won't help those who are prideful. I won't heal those who are proud, even women. A lot of you guys don't think you're beautiful. A lot of you guys don't think you're smart. A lot of you guys don't think you're strong enough or manly enough. So you go and you buy big trucks. You go and you have all the money. The world tells you these things. It, teach, it taught you those things because your parents didn't teach you it or you didn't have parents. It teach you, teaches you what a man should be. It teaches you what a woman should be. And you go on chasing those things. But God wants to unteach you those things and teach you what a real man is like, what a real woman is supposed to be like. But until you follow Christ, you think that's your identity. You think you're your big house, your, your nice cars, your job, your money, you know, your beautiful wife or whatever. But Jesus would say this on the inside, you're like a tomb on the outside. It's beautiful. But if you open it up, there's dead bones in it. 
clean on the outside, beautiful on the outside, but on the inside, you're rotting, you're death, you're dead. But Jesus wants to make you beautiful on the inside so you can be truly beautiful on the outside. When we look at the Old Testament, we look at a bunch of rules. We're like, oh, God just want to put a bunch more rules in my life. If you love your kids, you set boundaries for them. And God loves you. He sets boundaries for you. It's up to you to obey them or not. And it's not even just beneficial for him because God doesn't need anything. It's completely beneficial for you. To not drink and drive is beneficial for you. To not hurt each other is beneficial for you. Treat your neighbor as you want to be treated. Do you want your neighbor to curse at you? Then why curse at your neighbor? Do you want, your, do you want someone to come up to you and hurt you? Then why do that to others? I had somebody, I've been trying to not, do nothing but help these, this person. There's actually a few people. I've been trying to not just help them, help them, help them. Something happened. I'm not going to tell you what happened. And out of nowhere, they start cursing at me. What? That's the world that we live in? We curse at people who love us, who, who want to help us? We think that we're the greatest country in the world and we're free. We're not free. Everything costs money. Everything's a business. People used to do things for free because they actually genuinely cared about each other. Now everyone wants money. Why? Because of the world that we live in. America is not free. America is going to crap, by the way. But Jesus came to bring a new kingdom, an eternal kingdom, where it's free from these possessions, these idols. You guys don't find your identity in Christ. You find your identity in your possessions. And those possessions are pride, the pride of life that God describes. You know what? One of the things that bothers me, and I used to live this way, is to see a prideful man, old, just prideful man, like a child. I don't want to go too far into it, man. It, it just, it's like, wow, this is what, this is, now I'm living how God wants me to live. And this is what I see, man. It's like, these men are so prideful. They walk around like they're God, man. And I'm just sitting here just watching them like they're going to die one day. They're going to meet the real God. And he's going to throw them in a furnace to burn forever. Because they loved this life and weren't paying attention to the one that was coming. There's only one way and there's only one God. I do this message out of love. I have nothing to gain from this message. Views, really? <laughs> I don't get paid for this. This is coming from my heart. Hopefully someone hears it. I don't have the power, I don't have the wisdom or the authority to tell anyone what to do. But the Holy Spirit does. The reason you woke up today is because God gave you a breath, gave you the breath of life. And the reason why you're still alive is because he continues to give you life. But he wants you to have eternal life, not just life here. Life here is temporary. Yesterday's gone. It's already over. This video is almost over. Why do you keep living for temporary things? For temporary satisfaction? That's all this world offers you is temporary. But once it's over, what's left? The Holy Spirit is not a temporary feeling. Some of you guys, you guys have... 
shopping sprees. You go on a shopping spree, it makes you feel good about yourself, right? Buying something, sex, porn, whatever your thing is, alcohol, it makes you feel good. It goes, you get this temporary, whoo, for that night, for that day, for that moment, buy a car, buy whatever new house. I don't like this house and go get another freaking house for crying out loud. Instead of just appreciating the one you have, I'm going to get a new spouse or a new girlfriend or boyfriend. I'm going to get something new because I'm tired of this one. Is that how you want to be treated? You want someone to look at you and go, I'm tired of you. God will never look at you that way. And until you receive that, you will never appreciate what you have. Man, we've been... Since I worked at this job over here, we've been going through people like nothing for some reason. There's no security in people. People are just like, you can't depend on anybody these days. People are unfaithful. They don't like something, they'll just change it. They'll just go somewhere else. And we go through people like normal. And then I have to overwork. I have to cover for shifts of people that it just it's just so sad yes I, it's overtime yes it's i get to work there and make more money but i don't live for money i live i want to be with my family i want people i want a friends i could depend on i want a spouse i could depend on don't you some of you guys have a forgiveness problem you need to forgive here's what unforgiveness is like it's like going to jail expecting that person that you don't forgive to be there, and it's you, hurting, rotting. Or it's like drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. Maybe if I just curse at them enough and say F you enough and do this enough, it'll make me feel better. I'll tell you, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. People live their whole life waiting for the other person to die waiting for the other person to be hurt. And they're the ones that die and are hurt. You will never find reconciliation until you forgive someone. You'll never find truth and love until you find God. You can never do any of those things unless you find God, unless you give your life to Christ. You can give me all the possessions and friends and things in the world anything and everything that this world has to offer. I don't want any of it. Not just because it's temporary, because it's worth nothing. I want the Holy Spirit. That's what I want. If you could have the Holy Spirit, you would realize what true life is about. The Old Testament is a set of laws. None of us could obey him. Neither do we have the desire to obey him. We don't even have the desire to do the right thing. That's man-made laws. Why would we have the desire to do God's laws? And God is saying this, unless you obey each one of them, you will die in your sin because the law is good. It exposes right and wrong. And he says, unless you live your life trying to obey those things, you will die in your sins. Because what is good is over here, and it's the obedience of the law. But as what's bad and who doesn't obey them, they will die in their sins. So if you have a gossiping problem, it's a sin. If you compare yourself to other people, it's a sin. If you lust after people, who aren't your spouse, especially, including if you're not married, it's a sin. Watching porn, drinking alcohol. Alcohol is not bad, but overconsumption is. Don't get drunk. If you worship idols, if you find your happiness outside of God, the one true God, you're in sin. You're worshiping an idol. You're worshiping this world. Or you're worshiping yourself. The gate is very narrow. And you're in hell. You're getting a taste of what hell is like. 
separating from God. But I try to read the Bible and I try to obey it, but I can't. We're all sinners. No. There is a way. Yes, you're a sinner, but there is a way. God has provided a way. When Jesus died on the cross, he died so you could be forgiven. But not to be forgiven and then go back into the sin. And then be forgiven and go back into the sin. That's the rest of your life. In the course of 10 years, there should be some progression. You should, you're unkind, you are gossip. Those things should decrease more and more and you should become more like Jesus. He says, be holy for I am holy. How could you be holy if you're living in sin? If you still struggled with porn 10 years ago and you still struggle with it. If you still struggle with cursing and you still struggle with that and it gets worse. No, there should be some progression, some progress. You should start to desire to do the right things. I've met Christians who complain that they were Christians. They've known God their whole life. But you look at their actions and you hear what comes out of their mouth and you're just like, you don't know God at all. Yeah, I do. I'll read my Bible. Yeah, I do. I'll go to church. Yeah, I do. I'll pray once in a while. You don't know God. Because God doesn't do those things. You do those things. So basically, if you say that God do the, does those things because you do them, you're claiming that you're God. But the God that I worship, he always has something to correct me in. There's always a place that I need to work on. If you hate correction, you don't know God. Because you start to desire correction the more you seek after God. It doesn't even matter anymore about comparing yourself. You should become more like him. But with that being said, God has provided a way. Here's the line. This side's heaven. Obedience to God. This side is rebellion towards God. You should be progressing towards him more. Towards less and less sin. Doesn't mean that you're holy and you're perfect. Just means that you're making progression. But some of you guys, you can't even obey the law. Some of you think you just because you go to church, you do these things that you can obey it. I do obey those things. I tell you, you don't. Because God has given you a gift. First gift is re repentance to get your sins forgiven. Now you're in the boat. The second one is to stay in the boat. Because if you desire to do those things again, it's sin that lives in you. And that sin needs to be cleansed. You need a teacher. You need a guide. An instructor to teach you how to walk. I can't do that, personally. Thank God. I don't want to do that. I have my own problems. But God has sent a teacher, an instructor. He has sent a Holy Spirit. The world tries to make it sound cool. It's not an it, first off. It's a Holy Spirit. He says, when you believe in me, I not only forgive your sins, I send you a teacher and he'll guide you. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He'll guide you into righteousness. He'll live inside of you. He'll direct you. Your flesh your physical body without the Holy Spirit, all it wants to do is evil. All it can think is evil. All it is, is evil. And if you're thinking, no, it's not, I'm not evil, then you're totally lost. The only person who's good is God. And he says, I want to come inside of you and live and guide you. So you desired evil, but now you desire what's good. You desire to obey the law. But it's not you, it's God in you. And then you desire to read the Bible more. You desire to pray more. It's not you, it's him in you. But until you get the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
reading the Bible, praying, going to church, and doing all those things are completely useless. They're dirty rags. Can you count the dirt in your front yard? Can you manifest things from nothing? Do you have a personal relationship with each trillions of atom in the air right now? You don't. Then how could you ever present something unblemished and holy before this holy God who does have an intimate relationship with the air that we breathe in every molecule in the entire cosmos of existence of everything? And he can count and has numbered each and every dirt particle in our front yard, let alone the entire galaxy and universe. How could you know which way to go in your life? The right direction to choose. You can't. If you want the Holy Spirit, you have to believe in Jesus. You have to trust and yearn for this relationship. I never knew you, what Jesus said, was basically, I never had a relationship with you. And let me dispel this for a second before I end. I know that Donald Trump exists and all the other presidents who supposedly lived before him and the ones that are still alive. I know that Kanye West exists, and Michael Jordan, there are enough wit there were enough witnesses who lived when they lived. Like Martin Luther King. But I never personally met him. You know that Jesus lives. You know him, you know his name, right? But you don't know anything about him. Does that mean you know him? I know a lot of people who come to the grocery store. Do I have a personal, one-on-one, -on -one, intimate relationship with them? Like a husband has with a wife. That's intimate, isn't it? We have intimate relationships with our parents and our brothers and our sisters and people around us. But as a husband, Jesus describes himself as being a husband and his church as being a wife. Do you have an intimate relationship as a wife is supposed to have with their husband? Do you constantly look for ways to please your husband as women are supposed to constantly seek after ways to please their husband? And as men, we are that wife in this relationship, as well as the women, as well as the children, as well as everyone, we should desire to seek after God to please him. Everyone is a wife and God is the creator. Jesus is our Lord and savior. So we should seek after ways to please him. But the Bible says the proud don't even seek after God. And on that day of judgment, he will say to you, I never knew you. And I'm going to end on this. Do you want to know God? Do you want to know Jesus? You could personally message me. And if you don't know anything about him and you want a new life because you don't know when you're going to die in this one, just pray this prayer with me. In your own words, however you word it, just something like this. Bow your head before heaven and say, God, I'm sorry I'm a sinner. And I believe that you sent your only son to save me from my sins. I want to know you. Jesus, come into my heart and guide me 
to everlasting life. I believe. Romans says, in the book of Romans it says, he who confesses with his mouth believes. And for those of you who didn't, did not confess, that's disobedience. You don't even want to do it. That's your nature. I don't want to do that. No. No one tells me what to do. And God says that's evil. But those of you who confessed it, it means you're humble. And God saw that in heaven, wrote your name down, and now comes inside of you. But he doesn't want it to end there. He wants to guide you forever. If you didn't have a dad or a mom, if people were mean to you, and you've been bullied all your life, or you never felt worthy enough in whatever area, he wants to completely wash you in his blood and clothe you in white. He wants you to have a new life where there's no more pain, no more suffering. Suffering and pain comes from sin. And if you don't know the difference between right and wrong or how God defines it in the word of God, then you go on sinning and you go on hurting inside. But when God teaches you and washes you daily, you have to be retaught re-nurtured, re-raised, reborn, you'll start to understand what right and wrong is. You are never supposed to feel incomplete. Because if you do feel incomplete, Satan and his demons and his children of this world will teach you, oh, do these things and it'll make you feel good about yourself temporarily. And then you'll feel worse because you've sinned against God and his holy word. You are loved by God. This country and this world is falling apart every day, very slowly, but it is. And now I see it more and more. Families are falling apart. Nations are warring against each other. People are dying every day for no reason. Feeling unloved, shooting up schools, killing themselves. I lost some friends. I thought we were gonna be here forever. We're not. Neither will you be. Give your life to Christ. And come into a kingdom that never fades and where there are no evil people Life here is temporary. Give your life up before it's too late. Thank you for watching. God bless.